Hey everyone, Rayan here, and today we're diving deep into the world of solar power but not in the way you might think. We're tackling a critical aspect that often gets overlooked grounding. You see, a well-grounded solar PV system is a safe system. It's like wearing a helmet while riding a bike. You might not always see the immediate benefit, but it could save you from a world of hurt in those unexpected moments. So, whether you're a seasoned DIYer or just starting your solar journey, stick around because we're about to break down everything you need to know to ground your system like a pro. All right, before we even think about grabbing a shovel, we need to start with a solid plan. Just like any construction project, understanding your site is crucial. First up, we need to know what we're dealing with underground. That means soil testing. Soil composition can vary drastically, and different soil types have different conductivity levels. Why does this matter? Well, the conductivity of your soil directly impacts how effectively your grounding system can dissipate electrical faults. You can use a simple soil resistivity tester for this. It's a straightforward process. And trust me, it's way better than finding out your grounding system is ineffective after you've already put in all the work. Next up, we need to size our grounding system appropriately. This isn't a one-size-fits-all situation. The size and complexity of your solar array, the type of inverter you're using, and local electrical codes all play a role in determining the right grounding solution. Don't worry, we'll dive deeper into each of these factors in the upcoming chapters. The key takeaway here is that a well-designed grounding system is tailored to your specific needs and site conditions. Taking the time to get this right from the start will save you headaches down the road. Now that we have a good understanding of our site and the requirements for our grounding system, let's talk about the components we'll need. Don't worry, this isn't rocket science, but choosing the right materials is essential for safety and longevity. First on the list, grounding rods. These are the unsung heroes of the grounding world, literally driven into the earth to establish that critical connection. Copper-clad steel is a popular choice, offering a good balance of conductivity and corrosion resistance. Make sure you select rods that meet the length requirements specified by your local electrical code. Next up, conductors. These are the electrical highways that connect your grounding rods to the rest of your system. Again, copper is king here, known for its excellent conductivity. You'll need to choose the right gauge or thickness of the conductor based on the electrical load it needs to handle. Don't skimp on the wire size, it's better to err on the side of caution and use a thicker conductor. Finally, we have connectors. These little guys are responsible for joining your grounding conductors to the grounding rods and other system components. Look for connectors specifically designed for grounding applications and make sure they are compatible with the size and type of conductors you're using. Stainless steel or copper connectors are excellent choices as they can withstand the elements and maintain a solid connection for years to come. With our materials gathered, it's time to get our hands dirty, literally. Installing grounding rods might seem like a straightforward task, but there are a few key points to keep in mind to ensure a solid and effective connection. First, location, location, location. Ideally, we want to install our grounding rods in an area with consistently moist soil. This will help ensure good conductivity. Check your local electrical codes for any specific requirements regarding the placement of grounding rods relative to your home and electrical service entrance. Now, let's talk about driving those rods. A sledgehammer might be tempting, but a specialized grounding rod driving tool is your best friend here. These tools are designed to deliver consistent force and prevent damage to the top of the rod during installation. Drive the rod straight down into the ground until only a few inches remain above the surface. This ensures that the majority of the rod is in contact with the soil, maximizing its grounding effectiveness. If you encounter rocks or hard soil, you might need to relocate the rod slightly. Remember, the goal is to achieve a deep and secure connection to the earth. With our grounding rods securely in place, it's time to connect the conductors that will tie our entire grounding system together. This step is all about creating solid, reliable electrical pathways. Remember those high-quality copper conductors we talked about earlier? Here's where they come into play. Start by measuring and cutting the conductors to the appropriate lengths, ensuring you have enough to reach from each grounding rod to the next and to the grounding electrode conductor connection point on your system. 
Now let's talk about stripping. Using a wire stripper, carefully remove the insulation from the ends of each conductor, exposing the bare copper wire. The length of the exposed wire should match the requirements of the grounding connectors you're using. Speaking of connectors, this is where those specialized grounding connectors come in. These connectors are designed to create secure, low-resistance connections that can withstand the test of time. Insert the stripped ends of the conductors into the connector and use a torque wrench to tighten the connector bolts to the manufacturer's specifications. This ensures a tight connection that won't loosen over time due to vibration or temperature changes. Now it's time to connect the main grounding electrode conductor, the backbone of your grounding system, to the grounding rods. This heavy gauge conductor is responsible for providing a direct low impedance path for fault currents to flow safely to the earth. Typically, the main grounding electrode conductor is connected to the grounding electrode system at a dedicated grounding electrode conductor connection point. This point is often located near your main electrical panel or where your electrical service enters your building. Using the same type of grounding connector used for the grounding rods, connect the main grounding electrode conductor to the grounding electrode system. Again, ensure the connection is secure and tightened to the manufacturer's specifications using a torque wrench. The main grounding electrode conductor is a critical component of your grounding system, so it's essential to use high-quality materials and installation techniques. Remember the goal is to create a low-resistance path for fault currents to flow safely to the ground, minimizing the risk of electrical shock or damage to your equipment. Bonding is a crucial aspect of grounding that often gets overlooked, but it's essential for ensuring a safe and effective grounding system. In simple terms, bonding involves connecting all metallic, non-current carrying components of your solar PV system together and to the grounding system. This creates what's known as an equipotential plane, which means that all bonded components have the same electrical potential. Why is this important? Well, if a fault occurs, and a live conductor comes into contact with a bonded component, the fault current will have a low resistance path to ground through the bonding network. This minimizes the risk of dangerous touch potentials developing on exposed metallic parts. To bond your solar PV system, you'll need to connect all metallic components such as the racking, mounting hardware, and junction boxes to the grounding system using appropriate bonding conductors. These conductors should be sized according to your local electrical code requirements. Bonding connections should be made using listed bonding jumpers or by connecting the components to an equipment grounding conductor that is part of the circuit wiring method. Remember, proper bonding is essential for a safe and code-compliant solar PV system. It's always best to consult with a qualified electrician to ensure your bonding system meets all applicable codes and standards. We're in the home stretch now. With our grounding system installed and bonded, it's time to test and inspect our work to ensure everything is in tip-top shape. The primary test we'll perform is a ground resistance test using a specialized tool called an earth ground tester. This handy device measures the resistance between your grounding system and the earth. To perform the test, follow the manufacturer's instructions for your specific tester model. Typically, you'll drive two auxiliary ground rods into the earth at specific distances from your main grounding electrode system. The tester is then connected to the main grounding electrode and the auxiliary rods, and a reading is taken. The resistance reading should be below 25 ohms for most residential applications. If the reading is higher than 25 ohms, you'll need to investigate the cause and take corrective action. This might involve adding more grounding rods, improving the soil conductivity around the rods, or ensuring all connections are secure and free of corrosion. In addition to the ground resistance test, it's essential to visually inspect your entire grounding system for any signs of damage, corrosion, or loose connections. Congratulations! You've successfully grounded your solar PV system like a true DIY pro, but our work isn't quite finished yet. Documentation and regular maintenance are essential for ensuring the long-term safety and effectiveness of your grounding system. First up, documentation. Take the time to document all aspects of your grounding system, including the location of grounding rods, the type and size of conductors used, the results of your ground resistance tests, and the date of installation. This documentation can be invaluable for troubleshooting problems in the future or for providing evidence of compliance with electrical codes. Store your documentation in a safe and easily accessible location. Now, let's talk about maintenance. 
Your grounding system is a relatively low maintenance part of your solar PV system, but regular inspections can help identify potential issues before they become major problems. At least once a year, visually inspect all grounding components for signs of corrosion, damage, or loose connections. Pay particular attention to connections exposed to the elements. If you live in an area with corrosive soil or salt air, you might need to inspect your system more frequently. If you encounter any issues during your inspection, don't hesitate to contact a qualified electrician to address the problem. And there you have it, a crash course in DIY grounding for your solar PV system. Remember, a well-grounded system is a safe system, and knowing how to do it yourself can save you money and give you peace of mind. Always double-check your local codes and regulations before starting any electrical work, and when in doubt, don't hesitate to consult with a qualified electrician. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next one.